In this video, I'll be going over the spells, cooldowns, utility spells, pets, talent trees, and stat weights of the destruction spec for warlocks, and then putting that together to demonstrate some basic gameplay. This guide is meant for all levels of experience, so feel free to use the chapters in the description to jump to what you're looking for. The basics of playing a destruction warlock is generating soul shards and then using them for our high damage spells. Generating soul shards is done by using our other damage spells like immolate, conflagrate, and incinerate. And spending soul shards is done by using chaos bolt or rain of fire. I'm the sort of person that likes to know why I cast every spell I do so I know how it is benefiting me. So I'm going to go over each spell in our rotation and the talents we have that enhances them. We'll start off with immolate. Immolate is our dot that we'll want to maintain on the target 100 percent of the time. It does some initial damage and then lasts 18 seconds or 24 seconds with the improved immolate talent. Each tick it does will generate one soul shard fragment with a chance to generate an additional when it crits. The talent Sakrathar's Guile and Scalding Flames give a straight damage increase to immolate. Then there is also Ashen Remains that increases Chaos Bolt and Incinerate damage to targets afflicted with immolate giving further reason to maintain its uptime. And there's also Flashpoint that will make immolate's period Periodic damage give a 4% haste buff for 10 seconds that stacks up to 3 times while the target is above 80% health, which makes it the first spell we want to cast on a new target most of the time. Conflagrate is our instant cast damage spell that has 2 charges or 3 charges with the improved Conflagrate talent, and it generates 5 soul shard fragments. Each charge has a 13 second cooldown or 11 seconds with the talent explosive potential that reduces the cooldown by 2 seconds. The big benefit with using Conflagrate comes with the talents of Backdraft and Roaring Blaze. Backdraft reduces the cast time for your next Incinerate or Chaos Bolt by 30%. So I try to Conflagrate just before a Chaos Bolt cast if it lines up. Roaring Blaze causes Conflagrate to increase the damage of Immolate, Incinerate, and Conflagrate by 25% on the target for 8 seconds. Because of the way Roaring Blaze works, you want to space out your casts to maintain the damage buff. Incinerate is the main filler damage spell and Soul Shard Fragment Generator when you either can't or don't want to cast something else. It generates two soul shard fragments and an additional fragment when it crits. In the class tree, Sargeri Technique will make Incinerate do 10% more damage. The talent Diabolic Embers doubles the amount of shard fragments it generates, and the talent Burned Ashes makes Chaos Bolt and Ran of Fire give your next two Incinerates a 30% damage boost and can stack up to six times. The talent Fire and Brimstone turns Incinerate into an AoE spell, making it hit all enemies near your target. Our Channel Demon Fire spell plays a big role in this raid tier, with our tier bonuses revolving around it, so every build is going to take this talent once you get your set pieces. If you don't have the 10.1 set bonuses yet, this spell isn't a requirement, but getting some practice with using it wouldn't hurt. The spell itself is a 3 second channel cast and will launch 15 demon fire bolts at targets afflicted with immolate, or 20 bolts with raging demon fire, and each bolt extends the duration of immolate on the target by 0.2 seconds. Chaos Bolt is the main spell we'll use to spend soul shards in a situation where there are less than 3 Three targets. It always crits and its damage is increased by our crit chance percentage. With the talent Eradication, Chaos Bolt will make the target take 10% more damage for 7 seconds, so aim to have a high uptime with this debuff. Chaos Incarnate makes Chaos Bolt get the maximum benefit of our mastery every time. The talent Madness of Ajakir has a big effect on how you want to use Chaos Bolt that I'll cover more in a bit. For AoE situations, we have Reign of Fire as a Soul Shard Spender. There are a couple things to consider when using Rain of Fire over Chaos Bolt. First, Chaos Bolt is better when there are two targets or four targets when you use Havoc. Second, are your targets moving? Rain of Fire is a stationary spell like Blizzard or Firestorm, so if your targets move out of its area, then it will be wasted. If you're needing to do a lot of AoE damage, but your targets are constantly moving, you might want to look into Fire and Brimstone as a mobile AoE option. The talents Pyrogenics will make enemies affected by Rain of Fire take 5% more damage, and Inferno increases its damage by 20% and gives its damage a 20% chance to generate a Soul Shard Fragment. With the core damage spells out of the way, let's cover our cooldowns Havoc and Inferno. Inferno could be considered the only real DPS cooldown we have, since Havoc is a 30 second cooldown and may not be used in every fight, especially if it's a pure single target fight. Inferno will summon, you guessed it, an Inferno that impacts a 
sight and stuns all enemies at the location for 2 seconds. The Infernal will last for 30 seconds, damaging all nearby enemies every 2 seconds. While the Infernal is up, it will be generating a soul shard fragment for you every half a second, so you want to stay on top of casting your shard spenders, so you don't cap on soul shards during this time. The additional talents for Infernal are Crashing Chaos that makes the next 6 Soul Shard Spenders cost 1 less Soul Shard if you put 2 points into it. Infernal Brand makes the Infernal's melee attacks apply a stacking debuff on its target for more damage giving it better single target damage. The last talent spot has you choose between Reign of Chaos that gives you a chance to summon an additional Infernal per Soul Shard spent while Infernal is up, or Grand Warlock's design that makes every Soul Shard you spend reduce infernal's cooldown by one and a half seconds none of the current recommended raid or mythic plus builds take the extra infernal talents but i made what i thought would be a fun role playing build if you wanted to make a warlock that is all about summoning infernals and raining down destruction i have no idea how well this would actually do but if you're role playing then just go have fun with your infernal pets for Havoc, this has a cooldown of 30 seconds, and casting this on an enemy will cause all your single target spells to also hit that target for 60% of their normal damage for 12 seconds. When paired up with the talent Pandemonium, it will last 15 seconds, which will give it a 50% uptime if used on cooldown. What makes this one of the best cleave abilities in the game, when compared to say a warrior, is that both targets do not need to be near each other to hit both of them. The other Havoc talent is Rolling Havoc, will give you a 1% damage boost for 6 seconds each time you cast a spell that is duplicated by Havoc. Warlocks have some of the most useful utility spells, which makes them a great addition to any party or raid group in the game. With Stolestone, Hellstones, Gateways, and Summoning Group Members with Ritual of Summoning. For Soulstone, it can either be used as a combat res or cast preemptively on a player so they can resurrect when they die. Create Hellstone or Soulwell, that's group and raid members grab a Hellstone to help with survivability. For the Warlock, using Soul Burn with a Hellstone doubles its healing potential and gives you 10% increased health for 12 seconds, which can help you get through some tough phases of a fight. To make things easy for you, I recommend Macrowing Soul Burn with using a Hellstone so that you always get the healing and health boost. I put the macro in the bottom left of the screen in case you want to use it. In fact, it's probably a good idea to macro soul burn with every ability it boosts. It only has a 6 second cooldown, so you can use it pretty much anytime you need to. Demonic gateways allow for instant travel between the gateways and can be used once every 90 seconds. Soul burn makes it an instant cast. Demonic circle allows you to return to a location when you use demonic circle teleport and with soul burn you get a speed boost and are immune to roots and snares for 6 seconds. The talent abyss walker gives you a small damage reduction buff for 10 seconds when you use a gateway or circle. Ritual of Summoning requires two additional players to create a summoning stone so other party or raid members can be summoned to your location. Now let's go over our pets. Which pet you'll be using depends on the counter, so you'll want to know what your pet can do for you. Each pet has a command demon ability along with a basic attack and special ability. Fell Hunters give you a spell interrupt as the command demon ability, and they also use a purge spell called Devour Magic to strip buffs from their target. Their attack ability is Shadow Bite. I personally hate not having a spell interrupt, so I go with Fell Hunter most of the time. Imp's command demon ability is Singe Magic and can remove a harmful spell from you, which can be really nice to have. They cast Firebolt as their damage spell, making them a ranged pet, and they also have Flee that allows them to break roots to return to you. Syad's command demon ability is Seduction, which is a mesmerized crowd control spell, which can help if things start getting out of hand. Their attack is Lash of Pain that does a stacking debuff on the target, which makes consecutive Lash of Pains do more damage, so this works well in long single target fights. They also cast Invisibility on themselves when out of combat. Voidwalker's command demon ability is Shadow Bulwark, which gives your Voidwalker increased health for a short time, similar to Warrior's Last Stand. With their Consuming Shadows spell, Voidwalkers can do some AoE damage. Their spell Suffering is a taunt which makes them a great soloing partner. In general, when doing open world solo content like World Quests, I run with my Voidwalker. For dungeon content, I would go with either a Fell Hunter or an Imp. Syad's Lash of Pain doesn't get as much benefit in short fights like in a dungeon, but their CC ability can come in handy in tougher spots. During Burning Crusade, I always used my Succubus in dungeons since crowd control was a thing back then. 
With spells and pets complete, let's look at the set bonus for 10.1. Like I mentioned earlier, Channel Demon Fire plays an important role in this patch because of the set bonus. The two-piece bonus will give Channel Demon Fire bolts, immolates, and incinerates a chance to fire off a Demon Fire bolt that deals 50% increased damage to the main target. The four-piece bonus makes Demon Fire bolts give you a 1% fire damage boost for 13 seconds that stacks up to eight times. Each stack does not refresh the duration of the buff, but casting Channel Demon Fire resets this effect. Channel Demon Fire either launches 15 or 20 bolts, depending on if you take the Raging Demon Fire talent, so each time you use Channel Demon Fire, you will get the full 8% damage buff. The reason it says Channel Demon Fire resets this effect is so that you get the full 8% buff for 13 seconds, whereas some stacks would fall off early if it did not reset the effect. I hope that makes sense. Since Channel Demon Fire has a 20 second cooldown, depending on how much haste you have, you can get pretty high uptime on the damage buff, with only about a 7 second window where you won't have the full buff. Using it on cooldown won't be a bad idea, but if you are setting up for a damage burst phase, then you might want to use it strategically and cast it just before the burst phase. Now looking at talent trees, using the recommended builds from Mauhead for single target and Mythic Plus, there are only a few points that differ. The class side of the tree remains the same in both builds. Many of the talents are utility based, so you can switch around some talents if you like the utility of another talent, but there are a few talents that do boost your damage that you'll probably want to keep. When looking at the differences between the single target and mythic plus builds, you'll see a lot of the talents remain the same. In the single target build, we'll grab Raging Demon Fire, Improved Immolate, 1 point into Scalding Flames, Burn to Ashes, and then 1 point into Master Ritualist. As a side note, this is probably the most single targety build I've played out of any spec in the game. Game. The only way you're going to hit more than one target in this build is with Havoc or your Infernal. You could also manually multi dog groups by tab targeting through them if you felt like it. In a cleave build, we're just switching out a few emulate talents and putting those into Havoc talents. For the Mythic Plus build, we'll drop the previously mentioned single target talents and go for Reign of Fire. We then want to go for Inferno, so we'll need to grab Pyrogenics to get to it. We'll also grab the extra Havoc talents and have two points in Master Ritualist. With Inferno, this becomes a really powerful build in large AoE situations, since the more targets there are, the more soul shards you can generate, which means more Reign of Fire casts and Blasphemy summons, and it becomes a self-feeding rotation. The talent Madness of Vajakir affects the way you're going to want to play quite a bit. The short 5 second buff it brings to soul shard spenders is something you'll want to take advantage of as often as possible. If you can generate soul shards fast enough, then you can chain this buff non-stop and that shouldn't be an issue to do during the time you have Infernal up. To help with this, it also reduces Chaos Bolt cast time by 20% to help get the additional casts in. Now let's look at stats and why they are important. Haste and Mastery are very close together in value, then comes Crit, and then Versatility is last. I'll use my Neglected Warlock as an example for simming stat weights. Like I mentioned, Haste and Mastery are close in value, and Mastery is actually swimming slightly higher with my current gear that needs a lot of improvement. I also don't have the set bonuses yet. Haste lets us cast faster, and makes Immolate tick faster, which equals faster Soul Shard generation. The faster we gain shards, the more often we can cast Chaos Bolt and Reign of Fire, and take advantage of Madness of Vajakir. The more Chaos Bolts and Reign of Fires we cast, means we can get Ritual of Ruin more often. It all links together. Our Mastery increases the damage of our spells by a certain percentage, and then on top of that, it again increases it by a random amount of that base percentage. With the talent Chaos Incarnate, your Soul Shard spenders will always get the maximum benefit of our mastery. Crit can make our shard generators generate more shard fragments and increase the damage of Chaos Bolt by our crit percentage. Last is versatility. Now let's put together everything we've learned and go step by step through some basic gameplay as I explain what is happening. For the single target, we're starting with Immolate. This will start our soul shard generation and apply two damage boosts by way of Ashen Remains, and since the target is above 80% health, we're going to get flashpoint stacks. We'll immediately follow the Immolate cast with a Conflagrate. This gives us five soul shard fragments, apply the Roaring Blaze debuff to the target to give our Immolate Incinerate and Channel Demon Fire spells 25% more damage, and gives us one stack of Backdraft to reduce the cast time of Chaos Bolt, which is what we'll cast next. Chaos Bolt will apply the Eradicate debuff to the target, giving us another 
10% damage boost. Begin building stacks of burned ashes to buff our incinerates and start the 5 second window of Madness of the Azure Cure. I'm going to pretend I have the set bonus on and then use Channel Demon Fire for the 8% fire damage buff and to get its cooldown started. From this point on, I'm going to start managing my spells and target debuffs. I'll refresh Emulate while it's in the pandemic window. I'll use Conflagrate when Roaring Blaze is about to drop off and try to follow it with a Chaos Bolt. I'll try to cast a Chaos Bolt at least every 7 seconds to maintain the Eradication debuff and ideally cast them within 5 seconds of each other for the Madness of the Azure Cure buff. When I'm not doing any of those things, I'll fire off an Incinerate which will start eating up the Burn to Ashes stacks. In an AoE situation, I'll start by applying Immolate to my main target to start Soul Shard Generation, cast my first Reign of Fire to further boost Soul Shard Generation from the Inferno talent, pretend I have my set bonus, and cast Channel Demon Fire for the damage buff. I'll then cast Havoc on a second target so that my Conflagrates and Incinerates will also hit it for a nice boost in Soul Shard Generation. After this point, I'll again be maintaining Immolate on my main target for Shard Generation, using Havoc on cooldown on a second target, casting Reign of Fire as much as I can. Can, and in between casts, I'll fire off Conflagrates and Incinerates to help get enough shards for another Reign of Fire cast. Now for a quick review. Covered our damage spells, how they work, and the talents that boost them, cooldowns and what they do, went over a few of our utility spells, explained the tier bonus that we get from Abra's tier set, talked about which pit helps in different situations, discussed the recommended talent tree for 10.1, and talked about what each stat does for us and their importance. We'll wrap it up here. I plan on making a guide for demonology and affliction as well, but I'll probably wait until the 10.1.5 changes hit demonology to make that video. If you'd like to see those when they come out, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, take care.